This is Mirror Talk, the series for The Dash. And I'm excited that, you know, this being episode one, to have this guest on. She is not only the smartest person I know, but somebody who, honestly, because of her, I am where I am now. And so I'm honored to have her on, my beautiful and lovely wife, Miss Danielle Anderson. How are you doing? Hello. Doing well. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you're here with me. Glad to be here. Uh, I'm I'm excited, one, because I'm like, I've been talking about doing a podcast for like two years. <laughs> yes, that is true. And you are you are very much so a go getter. You're like, no, nah, just if it need to happen, we can we finna get it done. And I am the one that can get lost in ideation and th- and dreaming and thinking about what could be. And then before long, I lose the interest and move on. So uh, to see it happening is exciting, and to have you on it is dope. So, um, man, real quick, tell the people who you are, what you do, who I am, what I do. Come on. Okay, mm-hmm. I am a proud mom of four. I am someone who, who recognizes, I'm going to use my, I recognize statement. Let's go. I recognize that people expend ample amounts of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy to just do their jobs well, be a parent, just kind of live, uh, and can often feel depleted, potentially headed towards burnout. Mm-hmm. And so I'm passionate, and I do feel, you know, from our own story of grief, I do feel purposed to teach whole health from the scriptures yeah. so that people can find places and ways to rest and restore and grow as agents of healing in their circles of influence yeah. while they also work to experience more of God's abundance. So what does whole healing look like to you? Um, so whole health to me is, so I get the idea from the, just the truth that I believe we're integrated beings, like our yeah. thoughts affect our bodies, our bodies affect our emotions, like yeah. we're just inter- interconnected. And so whole health kind of looks like individuals and even communities together. I don't, I don't think it's a solo thing. Yeah. Cultivating health in various areas, whether it's mental or physical or financial or environmental or intellectual, and just kind of looking at themselves and going, what? Do we need in this area to be healthy, to exist more in that abundant living rather yeah. than um, just what's not abundant? What was what was life like for me, in your opinion, and even for yourself as being someone in the home with me when all the things leading up to doing a song like Mirror Talk were happening? What was life like? Yeah, like what was I? I I know that's that's that can be hard for sure. Yeah, and frustrating. <laughs> and yeah, it's a loaded question for sure. I mean, the first word that comes to mind is just hard. Like yeah. Life was just hard. Yeah. Um, as you're living alongside someone who is going through like the depths of stuff you were dealing with. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. Like one, it's hard from like just that perspective of like, man, that person is going through some really heavy stuff and their countenance, like you can see it in your body, your countenance, your shoulders would be kind of hunched. Mm-hmm. Like that was just hard to watch from you as an individual perspective. But then you think about like, but you as an individual affect lots of areas of my life yeah. and I need your healthy presence here. And so you yeah. think about like the impact that had on us in our relationship and then your presence in the home and how that affects then the boys. And then, you know, f- um, professionally, what you're dealing with, how that affects your profession. And I'm like, this is how we eat. <laughs> um, Cause at the time I was primarily a home educator yeah, and didn't, was not bringing in any money. I mean, I taught yoga classes at the, at the Y, yeah. but that was not making a huge significant impact on our finances. Not as so real. There, there's like a large ripple effect of man, where you are really affects a whole lot of spaces. It not, doesn't just affect you. Yeah. And so as one of the people who it affected greatly, and then being a mom to the children who it affected greatly, it, it, it was hard. And I think there were a lot of days where, um, you know, I existed in a in a myriad of emotions. Like I'd be frustrated with you, I'd be sad for you, I'd be praying for you, I'd be hopeful for you. So it was this kind of this constant mix. Um, but it really was a. It just felt like a really long time of laboring in prayer. Yeah. Um, and also just laboring in life like come on can he please like wake up in some way and and like be present and be around and be yeah. active in in our home in life even with friends like even watching dynamics that you had with your friends was hard 
Cause there were, cause there were times where I'd be like, I feel like he needs too much for me. Go to your friends, but you wouldn't go to your friends. So yeah. it was just, it was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think that's a big deal. Cause there were things I wasn't hearing, but what stands out for me now is like, you didn't quit. Like there was no like shying away from being able to say what was needed. I mean, I definitely wanted to at times. Oh, facts. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I think I did get to a point where I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm done trying to say these words and, ex and expend my mental and emotional energy. Like, I cannot change this man. He is mm -hmm. a whole grown man. He will make his own choices. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to one of your friends and kind of lamenting, like, God, he just will not listen to me. Like, I was just lamenting that. And he kind of put me in my place in a, in a kind and gentle way. He's like, Danielle, he's not listening to or hearing from the Lord. Yeah. So why would you expect him to hear from you? I'm like, yeah. oh, God, okay. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, that's good. But it was like it was it was a sobering statement, mm -hmm. and then that kind of shifted my efforts and prayers yeah. to like, okay, Lord, I need you to break through them because, mm -hmm. yeah, he's right. You're he's not he being the the friend. Yeah, he is right. Tadashi is not hearing from you right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, another friend, a conversation with one of your friends, me saying, "Gosh, I just don't believe he, or I don't think he believes what God says about him," and their gentle, sober response back. Danielle, we don't think he knows what God says about him. Yeah. Moving forward through all of these moments, I found myself having to admit I'm one of 7 billion. Mm -hmm. I don't have the monopoly on knowing it all. So maybe these people who are talking to me have some wisdom and insight. Secondly, if I am dealing with something that is beyond my know-how to deal with, um, then I do need to go to therapy. I do need to trust the wisdom of others. And in hindsight, I can go back like I do, like in this moment now, I can go back to you or my friend Beth, or I can go back to our, our friend Adam and Duntoy, our friends there, and just be like, yo, y'all were saying it. I just, I just couldn't hear you. Thank you for still saying it because it mattered. If you could hold a mirror up to yourself, we're going to get a little more personal. Mm -hmm. If you can hold a mirror up to yourself, and get real about something mm -hmm. concerning you, mm -hmm. besides pointing out how beautiful you would look in the mirror, wow. what else would it be? I, and it kind of might be a shame narrative, or it is a shame narrative. I have an old, deep-rooted belief that I am what I do. Mm. And so I have been work, really working to, to disintegrate that idea, like to shrink that toxic yeah, thought, yeah. if I can use the verbiage of Dr. Caroline Lee. Real quick, explain why that's toxic. Oh, okay. Well, there's a quote, so I, I like to read. Yeah. It's like I got lots of books in my head. Um, one of my favorite quotes that stood out, I think it, the, the, your, the equivalent of what the search for significance was for you, mm -hmm. this book at least was for me probably six or so years ago. It's called Grace for the Good Girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's called by Emily P. Freeman. I remember you reading that. And in the book, she says, I'm going to say it slow. If what you do determines who you are, then failure to do means failure to be. Wow. And so for me, as a, bu as a busybody, as someone who in the past was had my own insecurities and would like find my significance through how I performed or how I like my perfection in things, like I'm going to be the best at the academics. I'm going to be the best at this. Um. I would begin to tie my value to what I did. Yeah. So if I wasn't then doing, I didn't have value. And so there were times as a mom, like especially when like you when I first have the baby and you're like immediate immediate postpartum and you're nursing and you're tired and everything, you're still bleeding from labor, right? Yep. You I felt so worthless because I wasn't doing it. I'm like all I'm doing is oh. sitting in the bed holding this baby. Like what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Cuz culture had said you should be cleaning up your house or cooking a meal or like produce. You should be producing something. No, that's we live real. in a culture that's like, it's all about productivity. Yeah. And even me, I, I bought into that lie. Yeah. I strive for productiveness. And I'm, that pr productivity proves it proves I'm worth something. Yeah. It, it proves I have value. It proves I'm worthy. Right. And so I'm working to break that down in my mind and I'm actively practicing now. I'm going to just like, I'll feel in my body when I don't have something to do mm -hmm. and I'll feel the, like I should be doing something <laughs> and I'll stop in that moment and go, no, yeah, 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 you have value. Your value is not found or found in what you do. Right. You can just pause and you can just be. And for me, that is a, a tangible practice that I have to do. I have to work to stop moving. Yeah. 
because I don't want my movement to then equal my value and my worth. That's the whole goal of Mirror Talk is to be able to say, let's look in the mirror and get real. You have a lot of negative talk going on. Most of us do, but we don't take note of that, nor do we want to be honest about it because we're afraid that will point to the fact that maybe I don't believe like I should, or maybe I'm doing a disservice to God if I admit that I'm being negative in a, in a life that he's blessed me to have. It's like, no, be real, be honest. And the funny thing is, no matter if you're real about it or not, God already sees it. He knows it. Yeah, and one of the beautiful things is that God has given us the ability to choose. Yeah. We can choose to stay with those toxic thoughts and those narratives, or we can choose something different. So now I'll give you a scripture, because I quote a lot of books. Let's go. Come on, give me Deuteronomy the book. Deuteronomy 30, 19, yeah. God tells the Israelites, I set before you, or I call, I think it says, I call on heaven and earth to witness against you today. Oh, yeah, that yeah, I yeah. have set before you mm-hmm. life and death, mm-hmm. the blessing and the curse, Therefore, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. May live. For me, this is a foundational anchoring quote. I It was instrumental for me in grief. This is one of the quotes that kind of put me on the trajectory that I'm on now. Yeah. Because um, I think in grief, it, you know, it came down to me going, I can, I can just choose to eat myself to death in my sadness. Or because I found out I was pregnant in grief. I can choose to like care for myself and care for this baby growing mm-hmm. inside me and, mm-hmm. and eating myself to death. It's probably not going to be a good option if I want this baby to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would think in my head a lot, okay, I have the power to choose. Mm. I can choose what I set my mind on. I can choose what story I tell myself. I can, I can even choose how I respond in a yeah. moment. I yeah. can, I didn't, you know, I told the boys like, oh, you didn't have to do that. He didn't make you do that. <laughs> that's it. You know what we talk about? And I'm trying to help the boys know now, like you have a choice. Yeah, that's real. You don't have to resp- You don't have to be mean in response back to, to him. Now, yes, he did something mean. Let's acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Let's not like brush it under the rug. No, rug. Let's admit that was mean, but you don't have to be mean back. You can choose. And so I think in this whole pursuit, what I even, you know, bringing it full circle to what I said in the beginning of who I am, what I do in pursuing God and in pursuing the abundant life that he has made available for us, it really doesn't come down to big all moment. It, yeah. moments. it comes down to what choices are you making moment, moment by moment, moment day yeah. by day? Yeah. What practices do you have in place to help set your mind on the mm-hmm. things above, to help remind you of who you are in Christ? Mm-hmm. If there's not a practice that you're constantly doing that, I, I'm pretty confident that the narratives of the world, your own flesh, and just our culture and the enemy, mm-hmm. they're they're getting they're getting the space. No, that's good. I I definitely believe people are gonna think this is how we talk all the time when we <laughs> at home. They're like, man, they they deep together. Uh, but nah, that's so real. I'm 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 taking that all in. Even now, I'm like, yo. The uh, that's the name of your book. Choose life when you write your book. That's the name of your book. Choose <laughs> okay. life, but uh, but like that is one of my final blessings. I say when I do my wellness workshops. See, come I'll on. Say, I'll say you know thanks for being here. Whatever. May y'all choose life. May y'all be well. Yes. <laughs> so um, thank you for being with me. Uh, I mean, I feel like after talking to you, people are going to be like, you got to bring her back and talk a whole episode. Like we got to make that happen. But like, uh, let people know website, where they can find you, social media, all that stuff. Okay. I have a business that's Be Well with Danielle. It's Come on. A business. So it is a, a wellness business. Where yeah. we, my fitness stuff is under there. My, my speaking, my serving as a doula, all of it falls under that umbrella of Be Well with Danielle. So the website is wellwithdanielle.net. Um, on social, my IG is, it's my name, danielle.l.anderson with an O-N. And then on Facebook, it, I'm it. It's Danielle dot G dot Anderson dot three. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, because it's Facebook. my. It's Danielle Guillory Anderson is my yeah, is my Facebook name. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's how you can find me. That's dope. Um, and classes coming up. Yes. Um, I don't know when this is airing, but intentionally, normally, I teach a yoga one on one on Thursday nights at seven thirty p.m. And then my most popular class is the restorative class, which is on Saturday mornings at eleven a.m. all times Eastern. I am currently working to update my schedule to get like a more uh, flow class mm. and um, a prenatal yoga class. But I do have a fourth. That makes fr- sense. You're I have a, a fourth doula? Friday. Yeah, I got certified. I'm a holistic. 
Um, or I got certified up in holistic prenatal yoga. So that's dope. So I have, uh, I do have a fourth Sunday gospel slow flow. Ooh. Um, that's fun. We get to like flow to gospel music. So, so um, that's the those that's the yoga classes. So they can sign up for all that at be, at well with Danielle dot, dot, net. dot net. Okay, okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Danielle Anderson. Thank you, baby. I appreciate you. You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I have to let you know how excited I am to have this man of God. This powerhouse, this force. Ladies and gentlemen, when a tornado moves through an area, it says that it could actually grab a tiny pencil and propel it with such force that it would be like a bullet from an AK-47 ripping through metal. Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain forces in nature like lava that burns so hot that it can not only melt metal itself, but it can recreate the very crust of the earth to a different formation. That's how hot it gets. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things that happen on the earth that move in such a natural, powerful way that a tidal wave can grow to such a thing called a tsunami that wipes out entire land masses in and of themselves, removing everything, even the life on that place. Ladies and gentlemen, the person here now has power beyond any of those things you will ever hear or see in your life. Welcome, please, the one and only KB, ladies and gentlemen. Man. <laughs> wow! Wow! You got to get the proper introduction, you. brother. You have definitely, hey, hey, you you are the only man on this planet, bro, that has out introduced me <laughs> next to Amin. Yes, out introduced Amin's introduction. Bro. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna rec- I'm gonna I'm gonna put this mug. On a loop in my house. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Babe, babe, when you wake up, play this so you know. When, <laughs> turn it on. Turn it on. When the kids, before you do devotion with the kids, play this so they know. <laughs> let them, let them so they can feel it. So, man, speaking of I mean, bro, like, please give me, this is my first episode of my podcast. I'm calling the podcast yes, The sir. Dash because, one, we, we know the whole idea of, like, the dash is between the, the birth date and the death date. But not only that, in my name, my name is eight letters. You have the first two letters, T-E, the last two letters, I-I. But in the middle, D-A-S-H is there. And the dash is literally in my name. And it's almost like it. a sign of like, yo, you need to run this race well. So so this is what uh, I want to do, bro. I, I dropped a double single uh, and it's uh, OBJ and then it's Mirror Talk. OBJ starts, the first line says, fresh off my sabbatical. Like, I want people to know, like, I ain't, I ain't disappearing. I just had to take a break. I needed time to get right. Uh-huh. And then Mirror Talk speaks to the idea of the things that I had to get right about. So what I want to do, if you cool with it, I want you to listen to Mirror Talk and, and right now and just give me your feedback, bro. I want it live and, and, and right now. Exclusive, but it's my first time hearing it. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna listen to it and give you my raw reaction. Come right? on, man, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Yo, <laughs> my man, <laughs> bro. First of all, dog, production, man. Thank like, you, bro. Is that you? Is that is that that's uh, 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 is that is that you? That's Zach. Remember Zach Paradise, bro. Yeah, bro. He produced it. That's him, that, bro. The vibe, bro. Yeah, man. I, I feel like this is a a transparent, fresh. But here's the other thing too, bro. Your lyricism has stepped up, bro. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah, you, you know what? Because I, I gotta listen to it. I got. I'm listening to it as a fellow artist. So you know, I'm right. thinking analytically. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, bro. Dog. The, I don't know what happened during the sabbatical, bro. I don't know, I don't know what y'all was doing. <laughs> but the pin came back sharp, man. Come on, bro. That's what I'm trying to do, the bro. came back sharp, man. That's what I'm, thank yeah, you, brother. Man. Thank you, man. Bro, and I'm, I'm, I am loving the, the conversation, man. I'm loving... Uh, I think that I am... I am I'm struck by how transparent you are, bro. Yeah. I mean, it, it is like, hey, this is... No more, you know, th- this is not a song and dance. This is my my heart. This is how I'm interested, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking through, yes. bro. Yes, yes. I, I admire 
I admire the transparency, man. Thank you, brother. I do, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, That's bro. real. I appreciate you, bro, yeah, for real. Man, that means congrats, a lot. Man, seriously. Thank you, bro. It, it, the goal was definitely to yeah, most definitely. fight to be as transparent as I could, bro. Like, fight to be as honest as I could be, to, to be as transparent. But also the goal was to say, I want to, I believe, you know, I believe certain activities beget other activities. So I believe love begets right. love. Empathy begets more empathy. And I feel like... Uh, right. Lord willing, hopefully the transparency will beget more transparency in other people to be able to discuss these things in a real way. And so I feel like right. I, I feel like I had a chance to say things publicly and privately with different people to foster this moment on the record so that I could say right. honestly what I was feeling about myself, about others, about, right. you know, everything from body image to. Uh, being a, a black man in predominantly white evangelical spaces. Like, I want to speak to all right. of this. And so yeah. that's been the heart. And so I feel like people are starting to see that. It's Eminem in the rap battle at the end of 8 Mile. It's like, I said everything you was going to say about me, Clarence. Now what? You know, it's like that. Now it's what? like, it's like, yo, I called it all out. Now Take what? Take the power away from the Take enemy. the power yeah. away from the enemy. And now what I have mm -hmm. is an opportunity to invite people who really love me into that space to, to nurse me back to health, to walk with me as I pursue healing, to live with me in a way that looks like hope and not harm. So, bro, I'm, I'm fighting for that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm grateful you see that right. in the song.